Hi guys, welcome to my channel on CD Made Easy. In today's video, I'm going to teach intersection of solids. Under intersection of solids, I'll be treating intersection of prisons. If you're new on this channel, please click on the subscribe button. The figure above shows two intersecting prisons. Draw the following. The given elevation, complete plan, line or curve of intersection, and the development of pi b using kk as the same. So let's study the given. When you want to know the type of solid you're dealing with, try to study it from the dimension line. So whenever you're given any question on interpenetration, the first thing you need to check is what do you have on the dimension line? Now on the dimension line, we can see a square prism with what? Dimension 60, diameter 60. And you also have hexagonal face, one, two, three, four, five, six, 40 mm across corners. So the dimension line will tell you the type of solid you're working with. So let's move on, bring out your drawing instruments and let's move on to the construction. So the first thing is to draw the given elevation. So how do you draw that? Take the measurements. This is a height of 70 by 60. Measure seven centimeter by six centimeter. Then you draw this line up by one centimeter, that is 10 mm, one centimeter. At one centimeter, bring out horizontal line, make this line thin and place your protractor to bring out 25. It's inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. So bring out your protractor, get this angle, which is 25, M, um, 25 degrees, then for you to get this line, it has a given dimension of 35, 35 mm, that is 3.5 centimeter. So you have to measure 3.5 centimeter. So this is coming on the 25 degree line. So having done that, the next thing is to bring out this 40 mm across corners. So this 40 mm, if you want to get it, you bring out your set square. Bring out your set square. Position it at 90 this way. It must be at 90 for you to get it. So you bring it, you bring it out, position it at 90 degrees. You can see this is at 90 degrees. So it must touch the edge of the 3.5 centimeter from there, bring out um, your line. You measure 40, 40 mm, which is four centimeter. Make sure you have this angle of 90 degrees. So you can now bring out these parallel lines. These parallel lines, how do you get them? Since it's 40 centimeter, you just measure one, two, and one. From here to this point is one centimeter. From this point to this point is two centimeter. And from this point to this point is one centimeter. When you add up one plus two, that gives you three plus one. So you have four centimeter, which is the face of the um, hexagonal prism. So now the next thing to draw is this line. This line, when you're drawing this line, it must be parallel to this line. Let me show you. So you are drawing parallel lines. The lines must be parallel. Okay, so this line must be parallel to this. It must be parallel to this. And it must be parallel to this. That's how you close up the hexagonal prism. Then when you get to, when you close it up, just join this back to the top. 
So that is how to get the given elevation. So now if you want to get the plan, project downward. You have one, two, three points. These are the three points you project downward. One, two, and three. Using construction lines. After you have done that, join this line together, which is this. Let me go back to this. This is still the same diameter given as 60. So we are still working with 60. This is 60. A to B is 60 mm. So now, and point O is the midline. Point O is the midline. So from point O, measure three centimeter above and measure three centimeter below. Because when you look at the top of this prism, it will give you the shape of a rhombus. So now, when you are drawing the plan, you are to use the same. If this is 60, you have you have you have to use the same uh, diameter here, which is 60. And to get that, you measure three centimeters from the center above, three centimeter below. Then you close it up, you join this to this, join this point to this point, join this point to this point, and join the, the last point. That gives you the shape of the plan, which is a rhombus. So now I have A, B, C, D. All right, I want to move on to the complete plan. To get the complete plan, that means you need the plan of the square prism and the plan of the hexagonal prism. So we've been able to get that of the square prism. For the hexagonal prism, just project this line outward. The center line project it outward. Then you measure 20 millimeter above and 20 millimeter below because the face is 40 mm. So measure 20 above and 20 below. We move on to the next step. We are yet to get the complete space. So we project lines from these four points, one, two, three, four. We project lines downward from these four points, one, two, three, and four. We are doing this because we need to get the face of the hexagonal prism. And why do we need the face? We need the face because the pyramid, the prism rather, is positioned, is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. It's not at 90 degrees. If it was at 90 degrees, we would just leave it as horizontal line. But because it's inclined at 25 degrees, so when you are viewing the plan from this point, from the top, you will definitely see the hexagonal face. So there is need to represent the hexagonal face on the plan. The first part of the plan on pipe A, you will see a rhombus, and the second face, you will see hexagon. So let's move on. Project lines from this four points. One, two, three, four. We move on to the next step. Okay. The next step is to project lines outward from the elevation. One, two, three, and four. These lines are thin lines. Having drawn the lines, we want to bring out the hexagonal face. The first thing, just draw a parallel line. Draw a parallel line. I name this as FE, and you see the reason why I name it as FE at the end. I named it as FE. This line must be parallel to this line. Now, center at F, measure 20 mm, strike this line at a point using 20 mm. Center at E also, using radius 20 mm, strike any point on this line. You get this point at 20 mm. So now from point A, you have what? Using that same radius, 20 mm, 
strike here. Also from point E, from, from point E, okay, we have gotten point D. We have gotten point D from the, from the slide. We have gotten point D. So when I get here from A, strike an arc using 20 mm, you get this point. Same thing as from point D, strike 20, um, use 20 mm, strike an arc, and you get point C. So from here, I have A, B, C, D, E, A, which is the face of the hexagonal prism. So now how do I transfer this to the plan? Because it must reflect on the plan. So all you need to do when you get to the plan, it's a reverse. Instead of your pyramid, instead of your hexagon facing this way on the plan, it's going to take the other face. It's starting from this face. So when you bring it to the plan, project, this is FE, this is F, this is E. Then when you take A down, this is point A. When you take D down, you get points D. Then the same points you have as F, this is F and this is E, is the same point you have as B and C. B and C is just the same as F, E. So you have F, E, then you have B and C. Join the points together, you have the hexagonal face. So this is the complete plan of the prism. So now the face of the hexagonal pyramid on elevation is labeled as A, B, C, D, E, F. And F, E, D, C, B, E on the plan because reverse is the labeling on the interpenetration. All right, the next step is to draw the line or curve of intersection because the two solids we have, they are what? They are line objects. Definitely the um, intersection will be a line of intersection and not curve of intersection. So now how do we get the line of intersection? Come to the first line, which is FE. Trace it to the point where the line is touching the first prism, which is prism A. So where it's touching it at this point, draw a perpendicular line up. Take it up. When you take it up, you intersect it with F and E coming from the intersecting pi. So you take you trace it downward this way. Take it downward. So this is F. And this is also E. So you asterisk this point and you also asterisk this point. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because FE and BC, they are meeting FE on the elevation. This is the elevation. This is the elevation. And this is the plan. FE on the plan is intersecting FE on the elevation at this point. So we are I also are here. Okay. So I also do the same for the second line. The second line is a, D, line A, D. When you trace line A, D to the point where it's touching the um, square prism, take it up, draw a perpendicular. The perpendicular will still be the same projection line and it will extend to the end of the edge of the prism. So when you take it up, D, we also meet D at this point, and A, we meet at this point. So D is meeting at this point. When you take it, this is point A, D. When you take A, D up, 
it will still meet at this point, D will meet at this point, and A will meet at this point. So the next thing is to join the points together to get your line of intersection. Remember to outline. Remember to outline. This is the line of intersection. So the next question is just to develop prism B. So we want to develop B, and this is the entire prism. So it's coming from here, this line, to this line, this line, this line, this line, and the line of intersection. So we have to develop everything. So how do we develop prism B? So the first thing, project lines from the line of intersection and the edge. Project line from the line of intersection and the edge. So I'm projecting from point one, two, three, four, and the edge of the line. Because the line of intersection is just one, two, three, four. Then the edge is at this point. So I'll project lines outward, outward, outward. Then I will get my starting point. My starting point will just be a little bit away from the main drawing. So this is my starting point. After the starting point, I will divide, I will take, um, I will measure 20 mm in six places because I want to unfold this prism. The prism is hexagonal prism. To unfold hexagonal prism, that means you need to do what? Open it and make it plain. So when I want to make it plain, that means I will also divide it into six because it's hexagon. So I'll measure 20 mm and mark up six equal divisions. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Remember the question says using sim KK as develop using um, KK as the sim. The sim means a joint. So if you are using KK as the sim, this is KK from the question. This is KK. So if this is where we are using as the sim, that means I will start from there and I will also end there. So I'm starting from one and I will also end at one. So now this is one, two, three, four, and I will descend to three, two, one. Four is my highest point. So I'm stopping at four. Then I will descend from four to three, two, one. I wrote something here. I said, let's assume your highest point is seven. If you have like seven points on the line or curve of intersection, when you want to develop it, you can just use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, five, three, two, one. You will still get the same result. So after this, the next thing is just to locate the points of intersection. So I will start from one. This is one. And I will trace one on the line of intersection. I'll take it down. This is point one. They are meeting here. I'll trace two. This is two. Come to two. Trace the line. And asterisk where you have two on the division line. This is two. You asterisk it. Then I'll also come to, I'll come to three. This is three. Trace three down. Intersect at where you have three. The next one is four. Come to line four. Asterisk where you have four. From there, I'll go back to three. I will asterisk three. I'll descend to two. Then the last one is one. After this, you join it together. Join your points together. When you're joining, join all the points to get the development. And don't forget, unlike when you have a cylinder or a cone, this is a line object. Prism is a line object. So what you need to do, you outline these parts because they are the edges. So you outline the edges. 
use thick line to bring out the edges to get your development. So this is how to draw a given view, the complete plan, the line of intersection, and the development of prisons.